Hello guys, it's Rabo here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Yana Savings, which has been in the news a lot recently as pretty much all the customer accounts are frozen and people basically can't get their money out. So what I do want to say right off the bat before actually getting into this video, that it's going to be very, very harsh. If you're somebody who's very, you know, thin skinned or just you can't take uh, any kind of criticism, do not watch this video because I'm about to go in like there's no fracking tomorrow. So first off, I want to talk about the actual business model of Yana Savings. So pretty much just looking at it, you know, after the fact, yes, it is easier to criticize it, but just looking at it just right in front of you, it looks looks like an absolute scam like I'm literally not even joking you guys like this looks like something that I would fall for when I was 10 or 12 years old when I would click a random link and think that I want a free iPhone or I want my family like a free cruise ship I'm actually not even joking this looks like an absolute scam just looking at the overall website and just watching the video that Graham Stephan made because it was another channel that re-uploaded Graham Stephan's video when he first promoted it in like 2020 I'm literally not even joking this website looks like a freaking scam and also the fact that this fintech started in July of 2020 which is what Graham said in this video that he uploaded sometime in like uh, late 2020 the overall re-upload video happened in like December 2020. So when the actual release date was, I'm not 100% sure. It could be November, October, like, you know, like I just said, not 100% sure. It started in July 2020. Where the hell is the time for any reputation whatsoever? I mean, I would never ever put my money anywhere near a bank or fintech or whatever you want to call it. It has not been around for at least a decade. There's been absolutely no time for this fintech to build up a reputation. Like July of 2020, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God, like if I were to deposit my money anywhere, I need the bank to be around for at least decades. Like yes, these big banks are insolvent. There's not really much that you can do about that. So pretty much you have to do uh, deposit your money somewhere but in this scenario here i would not touch this with a 10 foot pole let alone like a freaking 50 foot pole it's only been around at the time when he uploaded that video for like six months and you're going to be depositing like 10 grand in there your life savings in there like what are you thinking like this is the stupidest thing i've ever seen in my entire life and the next thing i want to talk about as well is the dangers of yield chasing because what happened was you know this thing started in 2020 this is when interest rates were at rock bottom so pretty much all the big banks were paying zero percent but on average based off the deposit rate and your overall bonuses throughout the year with your out of savings people were doing the math you can get on average about two and a half percent in your account there so you pretty much have to analyze what massive risk this fintech is taking in order to give you a two and a half percent rate of return when interest rates are at rock bottom and literally all the big banks on just banks in general are paying zero percent that right there is another red flag so pretty much we're like i don't know like three minutes into this video i've already pointed out three massive red flags like how are people just not seeing this it's like the dumbest thing i've ever seen it's a massive risk when you deposit your money somewhere where they're paying a rate that's way above the market rate like we're talking rock bottom like freaking mortgage rates and you know depending on your credit score and all that stuff you could be getting like two and a half to three percent give or take so where are they getting the money to pay you two and a half percent plus all these other big bonuses because some people are going to get some really big prizes some weeks they might get 10 grand like i think i saw on the website that somebody won like a tesla model 3 so where is the auto savings getting the money to pay these you know weekly bonuses and all that stuff like i'm not even joking i don't even know how they make their freaking money i don't want to make an account to find out but like it just makes absolutely no sense. And the next thing I want to mention is something that I've been talking about on this channel for a very long time. It's the massive moral hazard of the FDIC. Nobody gives a damn when it comes to all this stuff. Nobody wants to ask the questions. It's only been founded in July 2020. The overall website looks like a freaking scam. I'm not even joking. They're paying an interest rate that's way above the market rate, but nobody gives an effing damn because of the FDIC insuring deposits. So what do I say all the time? I said the exact same thing in that video. So what this does is that it misallocates capital. It brings money from good banks to bad banks in order for people to yield chase. And also on top of that, because you know, uh, Yara Savings is the fintech. So you have to do is that you have to analyze the bank that yada is putting your money at so i looked at the bank that was actually backing yada and i'm actually not even joking this looks like something from like a sixth grade project just looking at the overall website and everything and what's funny is that graham steph and freaking analyzed this and was like yep i'm gonna invest my money into this bank and also become a depositor as well like this is the dumbest thing ever this guy has a net worth of multi-millions i'm literally nowhere near 100k and i'm freaking pointing out these red flags this is what happens when we're in a freaking bubble man and to be honest as well i guess people are you chasing because the big banks are not paying anything and the reason for that is because the fed is keeping rates at zero percent so in order for people to get Get a yield on their money they pretty much have to take massive risk in order to do so like this is something the austrians have been talking about for the last 15 years and what this does is that it misallocates capital in order for people to take big risks to get some kind of return on their money and real quick for some people who may want to criticize me in this video and like analyze my channel yes i do promote kinesis money you can see the link in the description but i actually did my research on this thing and yes there is a possibility that kinesis money could be an entire like scam and i will get into my next point in a second but i did not put my life savings into this platform but i was also asking good questions when i was analyzing kinesis money like where are they keeping this gold like I'll put it up on the screen here. They have uh, pretty much vaulting partners that they work at. And one of the security companies that Kinesis Money works with is uh, Brinks. This company has been around for like 175 years. So freaking what? Six months for this freaking fintech and whatever uh, bank that's backing them. Or 175 years at Brinks and a company that has been giving security services for like 175 years. So what's better? Kinesis Money or this freaking garbage? And the last point I want to make in this video and it pretty much ties into my uh, title is a freaking lack of responsibility when it comes to these people who are freaking depositing the money into this bank. How stupid are you to put your money into this? Oh my God. If you watch the CoffeeZilla 
the video, this one guy put 90 grand, his freaking entire life savings, not, uh, sorry, not his entire life savings. He said in the video that it was his family's emergency savings. Absolute stupidity to put your money into some freaking fintech that's been around for like, what, six months? Your entire family's freaking emergency savings into this freaking garbage. How stupid are you to put your money in there? Like, where's the lack of freaking responsibility? The biggest problem in this country right now and just the world in general is people's lack of accountability. Like, I'm just repeating myself. How dumb are you to put your money into this freaking bank? Like, at least if you put two and a half grand in there or like five grand in there and depending on your net worth and everything, like, okay, you lost your money. There may be a chance that you might get it back, but okay, like two and a half to five grand is not only the worst thing in the world, but your entire family's freaking emergency savings of over 90 grand. How dumb are you? You can't cure that stupidity. And also the fact that Yada Savings was being promoted by all these YouTubers as well. And yes, Graham Stephan was the main guy. He pretty much made a video talking about how he invested in the company itself. But what the hell does Graham Stephan know about banking? Like, let's be real here. Like, clearly he made a stupid decision. But what the hell does Graham Stephan know about banking? This guy made all of his money in real estate and YouTube. What does this guy know about freaking banking? And also when it comes to these other YouTubers that are being sponsored by them as well, like what the hell does Markiplier know about banking? Like this guy is a freaking gamer. He has a YouTube channel with 50 million subscribers. Clearly Markiplier is entertaining. The guy has like 50 million subscribers. Personally, I don't watch him. But what the hell does this guy know about banking? Why are people depositing their money into a freaking fintech that was being sponsored by YouTubers? Like what the hell? Like I said, what does Markiplier know about banking? Like answer the question for me. Why are you taking your money, your freaking hard earned money, your freaking emergency savings and putting it into a fintech that was being sponsored by uh, Markiplier? What the hell does Markiplier know about banking? Like I'm actually not even joking here. Like yes, Markiplier is a freaking multi-millionaire. Like clearly this guy has a lot of money, but what does this man know about freaking banking? Like. Where's the lack of accountability for yourself to put your money into this? I'm actually not even joking. Like if you lose your money depositing your money into this freaking garbage, I will not feel sorry for you at all. Like I'm not, like I'm being very harsh here. What do these people know about banking? Why are you putting more than 10 grand in there? Like, like explain that to me. Like I'm not even joking here. I'm actually freaking pissed off. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm freaking I'm fuming here. What do these people know about banking? It's an absolute joke. Alrighty guys, it's basically going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. Yes, I was very, very harsh in this video, but it's time for some people to take some freaking accountability. So uh, like and subscribe guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.